Hello, my friends. Welcome back to another Nourish My Soul's Mindful Monday. Um, this is the week of Thanksgiving, so I wanted to start off this Mindful Monday just acknowledging that a lot of us are feeling lonely, which is going to be the focus of this week's Mindful Monday. But not only that, but that this holiday evokes a lot of polarizing views and emotions and thoughts. And um, so I just wanted to spend a minute kind of giving you my viewpoint. So being in the food sovereignty business and having been a nutritionist um, and also practicing a lot of mindfulness and gratitude and all of that stuff, I this is actually my favorite holiday Thanksgiving, but it also causes a lot of inner conflict for me. Well, I absolutely love the concept of a holiday that's based on food that celebrates the abundance of the earth and what it offers to us and giving gratitude for all of that and for our loved ones and for life itself. That is a holiday that really, really resonates with me and I absolutely love it. It is my favorite holiday. Um, and, you know, pie. <laughs> I love pie. And it's the only time of year that I have it and indulge in it. And I do indulge. Um, so that being said, I also have this inner conflict where I know that we are, this, this holiday... Um, comes on the backs of many lives and the habit of white people colonizing and taking from indigenous people. And I know that a lot of where I am and a lot of the privileges that I have that are bestowed upon me without my asking or even acknowledging are because of that as a direct correlation to that. And so I have purposefully been researching, um, you know, we have a lot of land that we grow on, um, different community gardens and um, just even the land that we occupy and I've been researching who that land originally belonged to and trying to grapple with how I make amends with that and how I pay it forward. Because yes, I am the product of my ancestors' sins, but I did not directly cause those sins. But I also acknowledge that we cannot move forward as one until I acknowledge it, I make restitutions for it, and I bring others along with me on the same playing field that I'm on, right? I don't leave others behind. I don't say, oh, well, too bad, so sad. You know, I'm sorry my ancestors did that. It wasn't me. And um, I'm going to move forward and you should too, because they are at a starting point that is way far behind. And we are never going to progress as a society until we bring everyone to the same starting point. Living in ancestral trauma and generational trauma is unbelievably difficult and we need to work together to bring ourselves out of that state and to move forward as a society in a productive way. And the only way to do that is for us to start taking responsibility and to start to say, hey, where can I kind of give back and even out the playing field for the things that I didn't ask for and that I was just born into and didn't necessarily deserve? How can I make others have access to that as well? So that's something that I'm doing. If you guys have other suggestions, I'm happy to hear it. Um, I don't claim to be an expert on this. It's just something I wanted to put out there that I am reconciling and that I am wrestling with and I recognize. Um, but at the same time, I am very committed to celebrating our earth 
and taking this time to celebrate abundance. I think too much of us right now are stuck in a scarcity mindset and until we start realizing that our our planet will take care of us and has the capability of taking care of us if if we do it the right way, right? If we properly take care of our planet and one another, there is an abundance and we can feel secure in that and not sit in fear and scarcity. So I will be celebrating that. That being said, my celebrations are going to look a lot different this year. Thank you, 2020. Um, You know, while I say that a little sarcastically, actually, I do think there's been a lot of growth this year. Um, I've noticed some maybe unhealthy coping mechanisms and patterns within myself. And hopefully you have been taking this time to grow and learn and recognize your unhealthy patterns as well. For me, my unhealthy coping mechanism, while it was positive, and so it was, I was able to say that um, I was doing something good and I was turning a negative emotion or feeling into something positive, that is true. Um, I was keeping busy and I kept having big goals and projects. And um, for those of you who know me and are familiar with my work with Nourish My Soul, we have a lot of, we had a lot of, before COVID hit, we had so many things going on and we were involved in doing so much. And a lot of that um, fell on me and I was okay with that. I enjoyed it. I love being busy and helping others and finding meaning in my life. Um, but I recognize when COVID hit and, you know, 2020 happened um, that, you know, maybe part of that was the coping me- mechanism to not sit in discomfort um, and keeping busy allows for that, right? And I'm doing something positive, so that's a good thing. It's not like I was turning to negative coping mechanisms like drugs and alcohol and, um, you know, other addictive things. Um, so I have allowed myself the space and time to feel and that's really what it's all about. And that's what I wanted to share with you for this this week. I know this is going to be tough for so many of us. Um, I know for myself, I have four grown children. Two of them are local and two live quite some distance away. And um, the two that are local, we're going to take some. We, we took some COVID tests. And if those tests come back negative, then we will get together and that will be joyful. And I will be so grateful for that. Um, if they come back positive for any one of us, then we will not be getting together and, um, we will each be celebrating in our own homes and having a virtual gathering, which my older two, we will be doing virtually anyway, cause, um, travel is not, is not a, a great idea right now. And, um, it is out of an abundance of love not only for my children, but also for people I don't even know, right? Like that perhaps could get inadvertently exposed to this virus just because I wanted to hug my children, which believe me, I, that is a big deal. And I really, really want to do that. However, not at the cost of somebody's life, whether I know them or not. Um, Human life is very precious. And if it means that I make this one sacrifice for someone I don't even know, I am 100% on board for that. So how do we sit in that feeling of loneliness and isolation and all of the other negative emotions that 2020 has brought and will continue to bring through this holiday season? Um, I don't know if any of you caught the Radical Thursday podcast that our From the Ground Up High School Leader alumni put out each week. This last week, it was with Above the Stigma, and they talked about mental health, and it really struck me, which is why I chose this topic, this Mindful Monday. Um, It really struck me to hear Kenya talk about the statistic of suicide rates and how they have grown over 200% since COVID 
um, hit. That is mind boggling. Think about the loss of potential, those lives, and then all of the circles of influence around them that was impacted by that. It just, wow, that is massive and unacceptable. I refuse to just allow that statistic to happen. So I really wanted to talk to you guys, real talk, like what are you doing to make sure that your mental health is um, up to par and that you are healthy? I know we're not feeling our best. None of us are right now, and that's okay. It's okay to not feel our best. But um, I, I beg anyone who is feeling like they are contemplating suicide to please reach out for help. And anyone who knows somebody that has reached out to you and mentioned it, get them the help that they need. There's a suicide hotline number. Um, there's 211 if you're in Connecticut. You can call 211 and they will connect you with services um, or connect them. You know, you can connect your loved one with a therapist. Like, just don't assume that they'll be okay. Get them the help that they need. Be the support that they need and have those conversations. I know it's uncomfortable the first time, but we need to start having those conversations. Um, And we all need to start to learn to be comfortable in saying, hey, I'm not okay because none of us are okay right now. Let's Let's be real. None of us are okay. We have all been better than we are this Thanksgiving 2020. Um, and that actually kind of helps knowing that everyone is feeling this alongside you. So hopefully that helps to ease that feeling of isolation, which contributes to loneliness. Um, so back to our topic of loneliness, something that I have learned, um, that helps me deal with it. And I've mentioned it probably every week is meditation, which is really the practice of being, safe, comfortable, and finding joy in yourself and in your, in your inner world. Um, and it takes practice and not every day is a good day when you do it. Like not every practice is a good one. Some days I can only tolerate it for five minutes tops and then I need to move on. Um, and sometimes, you know, later in the day, I'll come back to it if it was, if it was, if I was struggling with it. Um, but other days it's just that five minutes and that's okay. But it's a commitment that I make that every morning I meditate and I try to do it every evening. It doesn't always happen, but as long as I start my day off with a meditation, sometimes I can sit in meditation for an hour. Um, those are the good days and those are the days that I feel really grounded and focused. Um, but that's not the norm. You know, the norm is probably around 15 minutes, 15, 20 minutes. And having that time to learn to be okay not being okay and to be okay with myself and not needing to turn to anyone or anything else to comfort me, to escape to, numb me, whatever the case may be, um, is a really positive practice and has completely carried me through 2020. If you meditate, I would love to hear about it in the comments. Um, If you don't and you want to start practicing meditation, let me know. Like if you're like, how do I start? What do I do? Let's talk about it and we can generate a conversation. There's no right or wrong way to meditate. It really is um, whatever works for you. The primary source of meditation is focusing on your breathing and not allowing any thoughts to get stuck in your head, letting them pass through. Kind of what we talked about the first week with the clouds, um, acknowledging them and and observing them and let them pass through. That is the basis of meditation. Um, But however you choose to practice it is a personal decision. And really, it's what works best for you. So I would love to hear about your practice. And I would also love to hear about how you are honoring 
the indigenous people that came before you on the land that you occupy um, this Thanksgiving season. That is really important to me and I want to learn from all of you. And so happy Thanksgiving, everyone. And I hope you enjoy this Mindful Monday. Bye.